Hey, what's up my peoples? I'm back again with another uh, video, video review and today I have the Entertainment Earth exclusive Astromech Droid 6 pack. So here we are and there they are and first and foremost as always we'll take a quick look at the packaging and this box is huge it, and it's shaped like an R2 unit. It's it's shaped like an R2 unit which is really cool. But um, at the uh, top of the box you have a, uh, an R2 series dome. You have the Entertainment Earth exclusive sticker right there, Star Wars. The window where you can see the droids. Uh, warning, don't eat anything in this box, that'll be very bad for you. Astromech droid pack, it's 4 and up. And Disney and Hasbro, and this box is just really cool. I mean, you got the cables on the feet and everything. and. It is narrow, obviously. It's not going to be really thick, but still, it's really, really cool. If I can handle it with one hand. <laughs> but, um, there you go. There's that side. And on the back of the box, you got the back of the dome and uh, words and things like warning. Um, these droids are not from. Uh, the entire saga, they're just from the Clone Wars and two original trilogy movies. And as you can see, you have the droids that are included. You have Jabba's bartender, who I actually gave him a name, but I'll get to that in a moment. R7F5 from Star Wars The Clone Wars, the best series ever. QTKT, don't get her confused with R2KT, you will make me mad. <laughs> R7D4... R2C2 and R2A5, and we'll get into him as we go on, but anyway, that's pretty much it for the packaging, and uh, I don't think I'll throw it because this isn't being recorded in my room, so I don't want to damage anything, or I will get in trouble. Sorry, I was trying to move the camera, so, or the tripod, so, here we have, well, all six droids, and let's start off with R7D4 because he's my favorite out of the out of all these in terms of his character and his color scheme. But um, very nice, and um, he has this little um, power charge arm, which is acting like a spacecraft linkage and control arm, which. It is a nice sculpt, and all these droids are a repaint of the Vintage Collection R2-D2, which we'll get into that in a moment, and got fuzz on him for whatever reason, so sorry, but, um, yeah, as you, as you can see, he's a brown and white droid, um, he's a prototype R7 unit, which I've covered that in my Clone Wars R7-A7 and R7-D4 review. But, um, if you didn't see that and you don't feel like, uh, and you don't feel like going back and watching that, I'll just state it again really quick. Um, R7A7, which is a Sokus droid, R7D4 and R7F5 over there, also known as R2Y9, don't know why he has two names, don't tell me, I, I never figured that out, but I'll find a way to... I'll find a way to find that answer, but, um, basically, um, these three R7 units are prototypes, which means they sport the dome and bodies of the regular R2 units, while the R7 droid brain is inside being tested during the Clone Wars, so there you have that, and, um, so, yeah, that's just, um, the basics of why R7-D4 and a couple of other droids are called R7 units, but look like R2 units. So, but, um, yeah, you can take this little arm and just fold that away. This panel is really loose on mine for some reason, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it stays in there, but, you know, if you, let me take that out, if you kind of shake it around, it will come loose. And, I mean, if you shake it like that, oh, it's making me a liar now. <laughs> I 
I was gonna say that if you shook it around like that, it wouldn't come out, but now it's starting to come out, but... I mean, you're not gonna be shaking him around anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but... Then you have this, uh, periscope. Yeah, sensorscope. I'm sorry, I, it's just... I guess that they originally called this a sensorscope, but that was, uh, before... Um, I got a gold pen on my finger. But, um, <laughs> uh, sorry, it's just, um, but, I mean, I get why people call it a sensor scope, it's because that's how they, uh, that's what it was called before, but it's actually called a periscope because, I mean, I don't know what a sensor scope is, but a periscope is what, um, people, and in this case, droids, would uh, pop up out of their domes and um, and look out of if they're like underwater or something. So it's technically called a periscope, but if you want to call it a centroscope because your childish memories, then don't let me stop you. So sorry, it's just it it annoys me a little for whatever reason. But anyway, and when you pop it down, you also pop down the third leg, which this feature I don't mind, but at the same time it's like, why? Why not um, make the periscope a um, a manual uh, pull-up periscope, like with the Clone Wars um, um, astromech droids? Because, again, I don't mind this, but... I mean, when you want to have this panel covered up and the third leg up inside the body, it's pretty much impossible. So what I may do is I may take my um, what I may do is I may take my um, my 3D printer and 3D print some panels to go over this gap, so that you can have this gap covered. And you can also have the third leg up, but who knows if I'll be able to do that, but, um, and another gripe of mine is that because of the periscope and third leg mechanism, you can't move the dome, so we'll just take that out for our articulation, and all the articulation is the same, so I'm just going to go over it on R7 here, but, um, they have swivel domes, so they can rotate 360. They have swivel shoulders, which go all the way around. Sorry, it keeps going out of focus. And he has, or they all have hinged ankles on all three feet. So, if you want, you can... Excuse me, I got an itch. You can pop the periscope in. And you can kind of angle this back. Like so. And, you know, get him into his tripod slash rolling stance. And they roll okay. Um, R7's, uh, R7's third leg's really loose for some reason. I mean, it's a QC issue with the Vintage Collection R2 mold, but another thing I don't get is why... These two wheels, or these two treads have wheels on the bottom, but this one has a peg hole. Hasbro, could you explain that, please? Because I don't get it. I, I, I honestly don't get it. But um, these guys are a little small. Uh, these are scaled uh, better with the um, um, with the uh, Clone Wars R2 and. Uh, you know, just the other Clone Wars Astromex, but uh, for comparison, here's R7D4 with an old Legacy Collection or Saga Collection. I can't remember which one it was, but his master, Plo Koon. So there you have that. And here he is with... Hold on, let me get him... Let me get his soft goods situated. Here he is with Anakin Skywalker. 
So and that blob on this belt right there, it's nothing serious, it's just two-sided tape, which I need to switch out, but there you have that. So, and you know what, I'll be right back. I need to get a Clone Wars droid real quick, or two, so I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Just had to pause the camera so I can go and get these guys, but, um... For another comparison, here's R7D4 with the old Astromech mold featuring R2D2. And as you can see, they are relatively the same size, so there you have that. And here he is with the Clone Wars R7D4, and you can see this one's a, light, a lot lighter of a brown compared to this one. Which, I honestly don't mind all that much, but um, an another thing I've noticed is that the brown isn't all that consistent. See, the brown on the dome is lighter compared to the body and legs. So, I mean, it's not that bad, but it is a little noticeable, so. And you can see the blatant differences between realistic and animation, so... Let me know which style of uh, Astromech do you like the most, the realistic style or the Clone Wars style, so. But, there you have that. So, um, as far as R7-D4's appearances, um, and I'm not going to go into full details and that kind of thing, but, um, about everyone's appearances, but... He basically showed up in the background of some Clone Wars episodes, like, um, like pulling up some images on Google. There he is in the, um, briefing room. There he is after Ahsoka brought, broke up his fight with R2. Um, there he is, um, with Plo Koon. Um, and by the way, that's R7A7 if you didn't know. And, um... Yeah, there there are some uh, some other uh, scenes that he was in. Um, he was strangely in the background of uh, Rodia when Obi Wan was trying to keep Cad Bane from uh, stealing a Force sensitive Rodian child, which is a little strange, and I can't really find it, and I'm not really uh, going to take forever to try to find it. But you get the idea, and I just think that's a little strange because I don't remember hearing Plo Koon being on Rhodia. But, um, okay. And, um, hold on, um, I want to show you guys something. The one scene in the Clone Wars where R7-D4 speaks. And I had it pulled up, but then it went away, so... Just give me a minute, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's R seven D four and you know what? If if you've seen the thirteenth episode of season four, then and you hear Plo telling R seven to cut the engines of their starfighter, then you'll know what I mean. But that's the one line, the one line this guy gets. In the entire series. That's that's a little sad for him. I feel bad for R7-D4 there, but... You know, they... Just... They decided to do it for some reason. And for some reason I can't, um... Get this thing to work. You piece of crap, come on. Okay, uh, I've almost got it. But, um... Sorry, it's taking a little while, guys, but, um... You know what, let's move on while the scene is... Uh, while I'm... 
just let's move on. Um, here's R7F5, or as he's also known as R2Y9 now. Like I said, I don't know why he has two names or operating numbers, but um, maybe he has a twin that has the same, or that has the R2Y9 uh, name slash operating number. Maybe it's the same droid. I have no idea, but um, because I believe he, uh, one of his names was a uh, revealed in a comic book and I don't really read comics all that much so I'm just lazy I'm I'm lazy when it comes to reading so um yeah you know you got the same arm that folds up and um the same pop-up periscope and the same articulation but um yeah, the sculpting's nice, the paint's nice. I would have preferred silver for the dome, if I'm to be uh, totally honest, but the gray doesn't look bad either. I mean, it definitely looks like his uh, animation model, but um, real quick, let's go back to R7D4 real quick because I found the scene. Yep. I don't know if you heard it, but... There you go. That's the only scene, or that's the only part of the Clone Wars that R7A7, or R7D4, excuse me, speaks in. But, um, yeah, now we're done with him. Sorry. <laughs> I just, I wanted to address that, and, you know, but, um, uh, and, yeah, I could have included the uh, episode, and, you know, the link to the episode in the description, but, eh, whatever. <laughs> but here's R7 uh, F5, and um, yeah, I, I, I like his names, or names, I like his colors. Sorry, my brain's going everywhere. Um, he's, a, he's a nice little um, R7 unit, R2 unit? I don't know. I, I, I want to I, I wanna call him R7 F5, honestly, because that's what his name was in the pack. Or that's what he was, uh, what Hasbro calls him. So, you know what, we'll just call him R7F5. So, but yeah, there he is. And as far as his appearances go, um, he's in the background of the, uh, briefing for Shadow Squadron. And he's, uh, also in the background of, uh, roaming the streets on Coruscant. And, uh, let me see if I can find anything else um i did see this one um this one little uh part where um or i guess picture where um basically um it's when R2 and 3PO were talking and they're ro rolling down the streets of, or they're walking down the streets of Coruscant. And, um, see right there, I mean, you can't see R2 and, you can't, uh, like R2 and 3PO were, were walking down that street and they passed by, um, uh, R7F5, so. But, um, yeah, I had the picture pulled up, and I forgot to pull it back up before I started recording, but that's where he appeared. And let's talk about QTKT. Now, this is not to be confused with R2KT, so don't, don't you dare confuse the two, because R2KT is her own droid, and so is QTKT, although she was, she's technically based off of R2KT, but still, don't, don't, don't get them confused. Seriously, it because it it humors me that people just assume uh, they know Astromax because um, and to those who uh, who don't assume, then I'm not talking about you. But to those who do assume that QTKT and R2KT are are the same, and they're just like they think that this is this. 
I'm sorry, but you you're not really. I I wouldn't say you're not smart because I'm I'm sure uh, you people are very smart. But um, if you get these two droids mixed up, then you need to do more research because QTKT and R2KT. If my camera will focus, for God's sake, stop it. But these two droids are completely different. This is R2KT. She's the original KT for Astromex. And this is QTKT, who's based off of R2KT. If my camera will stop that. But, um, sh same features, same popping out arms, same periscope, same problems, same this and that and the other. Um, here's Jabba's... You know what? Let's continue. Let's finish off the Clone Wars with... R2C2, very nice paint and sculpt. Um, I do like the uh, the drinks tray and the uh, drink dispenser arm up here. Those are uh, very very cool. And let me make sure there aren't any gold paint splotches. Okay, I found some on uh, on Java's bartender, so that's why I have gold on my finger, which uh, most of it's gone. But who cares? Anyway. Um, like I said, same features, same. It, it's the exact same, just you know, with the drinks tray and the cups are removable. They just peg in, and I don't really want to lose any, so I'm trying. Let's uh, let's take this one off. There we go. It is a a snug fit, but yeah, you could remove these cups and have other people hold them. Like uh. Let's see if we could get Anakin to hold a cup. There we go. Kind of have to wedge it into his hand, but he can hold it. So, there we have that. But, um... Yeah, very cool droid. I do like the color scheme. I mean, blue's my favorite color, so this uh, this works. It used to be green, but I switched from green to red and then um, to blue. So, uh, you know what? We'll talk about this guy. Um, he he appeared in Return of the uh, in uh, uh, words, but um, Jesus, he appeared in Return of the Jedi. And he was one of the background Astromax, and he actually doesn't have a name. So, the name I gave him is R2J2. So, you can name him R2J2 if you want. You can name him something else. It's your toy. Do what you want. But, um... If you're hearing some something in the back... Uh, <clears throat> God... If you're hearing something in the background, that's my cat playing with the blinds. But, um... But yeah. You know, he's white, he's red, he's gold. Well, he has a little bit of gold. And, um, yeah, it's very unique how he has a white R2 dome. Which is really, really cool. I mean, white domes aren't very common. They're usually either, um... Um, they're usually either silver or just some other color. So, I do like this. Um, and like I said, you know, pop-up periscope. It's a little power charge arm slash space graph linkage and control arm can fold out. You know, all that good stuff. And I don't have a Jabba to put him with, so unfortunately he's all alone, but maybe I'll uh, track down a, job, a Jabba the Hutt, or hopefully Hasbro will re-release him or something in the Vintage Collection. Now, here's R2A5, and unfortunately this guy was, edit, was cut out of the Special Edition version of A New Hope, which that's the one pet peeve I have with uh, the Special Editions. I mean, I haven't seen the original version of A New Hope in a very long time, if at all. So that's why I'm all in for Greedo Shot first, because it's just proper. I mean, 
if they don't make Greedo shoot first, then he's kind of a throwaway character, don't you think? But, um... He's cool. Um, the paint isn't accurate. Like, this panel should have been green. Uh, these green stripes should have continued onto the shoulders. And this fuzz should get away from the freaking dome. And, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, he was sitting on my dresser for a while, so he's a little dusty, as well as some of the other droids here. But, um, but, um, I mean, I do like his paint design, but this panel should have been green. And there should have been another panel or two that uh, was green, and I don't think this should be black, but, you know, it is what it is. I may go over it with Sharpie or paint or something, but I don't know for sure yet, but, um, yeah. So, um, I'm not really gonna compare them to really anyone, because I already did it, but, um, here they are with the Vintage Collection R2-D2, which, um, I took the pa the panel from the periscope he had and just put it in there and stuff, but as you can see, they all fit nicely, and, um, I do like the set, um, it's not, uh, it did go on clearance, uh, on entertainmentearth.com, but I don't know if they still have these guys in stock, um, if they don't, then don't pay eBay prices, just... If you want these droids, and you don't, uh, but you don't like the mold, then customize some droids, or ask someone to customize them for you. Like, um, like Wraith Nine Customs, um, my friend who lives in the UK, Jay. I met him uh, on Facebook. We got to talking about Astromax and stuff. But this, but Jay is amazing at customizing droids. So if you want one of these droids in realistic style, whether it's or one of, uh, well, if you want any of these droids, and you want any of these droids in realistic style, then hit him up, you know, get in contact with him, ask him, you know, hey, could I have an R7-D4, or hey, could you make me a QTKT, or hey, I need a R2-C2, or whatever, just hit him up, and he'll take care of it, so... But yeah, um, that's basically it for my review of the Entertainment Earth Astromech Droid 6-pack, and these are a good set of droids, but like I said, the the $60 price point, while it's $10 a droid, I still find it a little steep. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not the best either, but um... Yeah, I mean, I still love these droids. I'm I'm glad I got them. Uh, I did get them for a Christmas gift from my Nana, so I have her to thank for these little guys. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this pack. So, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Um, well, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna review one of these um, uh, Droid Factory Four packs. But um, I don't know if I'm going to do all three of them in one video or if I'm going to break them up. I may just break them up. But um, anyway. So there you go. There's the Entertainment Earth Astromech Droid uh, six pack. And I'll see you in the uh, next review. I know I said I would review Leia next, but I figured eh, I'll just get these out of the way. So, But there you go. See you in the next video.